Hi everybody, it's Joe Chaffee. I thought it'd be a good idea to take a look at all three models side by side because we're really no closer to figuring this out um, than we were a little earlier. Um, a couple of notes. I just want to thank uh, tropicaltidbits.com for these great maps. Uh, tropicaltidbits.com is a great website. It's got a lot of different weather maps on there from different models, including the ensembles and even the small scale NAM and a few others. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of uh, fun and worth taking a look at. Um, a lot of you have asked me why is it that we were getting all this mass confusion from run to run and it, it's actually pretty simple. There's so much going on in the atmosphere. We've got um, two uh, split jet streams. Each has a, a ton of energy in each one and you've got all that going on. On top of it, you've got this major pattern change that's underway. So the, the, the atmosphere is basically in so much turmoil that it really doesn't know what to do and models don't seem to know how to handle this too well. So just to show you what's going on with respect to the models, so here's the GFS for this uh, first little weekend event that comes up. And you can see it still forms a low just offshore and it moves on out. Now here's the second one and it's a little faster with it. By Sunday afternoon, it's off the Florida coast. It runs northeast from there kind of grazes us with a little precip and then gone and then it's just cold and dry after that and, and then there's a major cold push that comes down later in the period and so on and so on okay so now let's go to the um canadian which offers a, an entirely different view of everything uh in a lot in, a, in in some ways um it doesn't seem to know how to focus on this energy either so there's your saturday event there it is. You can barely find it. Okay, and then that goes out. Now here comes the next low uh, with the uh, one for uh, January 11th, 12th, or however you want to time it out. And it stays flat, goes out to sea, and you can barely find it. And that's its idea because of how it, it handles the energy. And now we have the European, which if we go back to the beginning and roll this one, and I know the maps don't match, but that's because they don't, we're not, we don't have access to the um, preset map, so we'll have to make do with this. Um, you can see on the European, we go into Saturday, and you can kind of barely pick out. There's a surface low here. It's very weak. So you have a weak system that goes by there. And now suddenly on Sunday, you have a, a, a fairly well-developed well -developed low near Nashville or just north of Nashville that runs up and intensifies into a major storm over Albany on Monday morning. So you ask, well, how do they all get to these different points? Okay, well, let's look at the upper air because I think that really kind of speaks to why uh, this was all happening so differently and, and goes back to what I said earlier, which is that you've got two separate jet streams with tons of energy and each model handles it a different way. So we'll start with the GFS. Okay, and just keep your eyes up here because that's where most of the action takes place. And you'll see there's our trough that brings in the cold air now. And you can kind of barely find what's coming out for that first lead event, but it's in there somewhere. And here we have the second weather system starts to get together on the GFS. And you'll notice that it's very disjointed here. You've got a piece here, you got a piece here, you got a piece here. So on this run, it's not really well defined, and then it just kind of goes up and out. And you've got a vortex that cuts back uh, from Lake Winnipeg on north and west. Okay, so that's that model. Now we'll go to the Canadian model, and it loads, just gives it a little time there. Okay, so here's the uh, Canadian model, which by the way, uh, has a stronger upper system that comes through tomorrow, so that's why I kind of left in the idea of a burst of snow, but we'll leave that alone for now. And here's the Canadian model, and you can see the same sort of idea, just kind of disjointed with one weather system that's, that's way out. You've got uh, energy here, you've got this vortex, you've got this stuff down in the southwest, and as we move into that first part of next week, it really... You know, it's very hard to find. It seems to be wanting to concentrate all the action at the upper air way out west of where the lead system is. So it winds up staying weak. And then that sort of comes around and brings down some very cold air with it between days 7 and days 10, day 10. Now we'll go to the uh, European, and it's got its own view of things. And what it does on this run, if you see on Monday, 
the system that comes out here is pretty well defined. It's separate from this uh, vortex, and it lifts up, and it, there it is right there, right up to upstate New York, and then you have all this cold air with this vortex in Lake Winnipeg. So each model has its own view. And then, by the way, here is a 216, very sharp trough here from the vortex that's uh, just east of Lake Winnipeg, south southeastward into the southeastern states uh, for um, Tuesday into Wednesday that brings in a shot of cold air. So you can kind of see that each model has a different view of how everything is going to play out because of all the energy that's running around in the subtropical jet, in the northern jet, and then with all of that, you've got this big pattern change going on across the Arctic with pressures rising coming up from the Greenland side and from the Alaskan side. So we're going to see more model changes. We're still a good uh, seven or eight days away from anything of consequence. That's 32 model runs or uh, of the uh, GFS, and it's uh, 16 model runs of the European and the Canadian. So uh, if you don't think it's not going to change again, uh, well, uh, I beg to differ. We're going to see a, a few more different solutions being thrown out there before we finally start to zero in on what is going to eventually happen.